Call this meeting to order at 6.03. I guess we'll work. First, uh, I'd like to uh, review and approve the minutes from May 8th, please. So moved. You weren't here. I guess you so. Can you move them if you weren't here? Yeah. yeah. I was here. I have you and Damien not here. I wasn't here for a joint meeting. Get the film. <laughs> I just meet, I missed the joint meeting. Yes. Yeah, so Can I you amend the minutes here. if you're not here in the minutes? Can I amend the minutes? Can someone here else just make here? the motion? Motion. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Judy Pierce. <laughs> Do we have to fix them? Who seconded? Second. Green. Thank you. She wasn't here either. All in favor? No, 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 no. no I was here. Prove it. Prove it. Get the film. Did you make any motions? No. And no one believes for a minute that you could stay yeah, here the entire meeting. I know I was not. You were here. You weren't here. I know that I was not. I'm gonna here. go back. I'll be. I'll be there in a second. Did you send Cindy? Well, we have, we, have, <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor for the minutes from May 8th? Raise your hand. To abstain. Subject to Cindy's seven, confirmation. Seven, seven, My vote subject to Cindy's confirmation. Cindy's gonna look at something. <laughs> Your next one. You ready for financial conference? There's eight, right? Is it, I, how many people are here? This is hard to do. There's there ten all together. One, two, three, there's ten five, people. Six, there's ten seven, people eight, here. Eight, one ten. absent. Okay, eight zero two. Okay. Lynn's the only one not here. All right. You got the financial statement. No, I didn't do it. Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah, they're next. You're okay. next on the agenda. All right. So, right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm well, too, I'm too sorry. many people tonight. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry that the report was late, but I wanted to have a, a very accurate picture. So, I had to meet with a few people, um, a few directors to go over their budgets. So, as of today, um, we're showing uh, at the end of May, uh, we have an excess of 509,976.18. After uh, what's been processed today, um, another 74,870. It's 4,335,106.13 is our current available balance. What is it now? 4,351,106.13. And what I have encumbered in here um, on page. program loss for the school lunch. year our loss was 61,655 so we're to the better from last year by 20,445 um, and that's thanks to our consultant and our new food service director putting us on our good on a good path and um, if we didn't have to have the consultant this year if I take out those um, uh, those amounts right now we'd have a profit of about $9,400 so we are on the road to recovery in our school lunch program. I'm happy to report. Next. I have a question on all of these. You're sure that you've got every dime that we're obligated to spend in, in the conferences? No, no. I just did the majors. I did my. We was 
spent 10 cents. That's correct. The state picked up the funding of that at the beginning of this year or the previous year. Do you remember year they picked up the beginning of that? No, because no one ever told me to take it out. So they, pick, they, picked, up the, they picked up the cost of that um, be bought into the system. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So we get another $1,000. So that thousand dollars will will show up at the end as a yeah. toward EMD. I just want to make sure we're still doing it. So I oh, we are. Thing. Yep. And I said, speakers, what to put that in and make sure we did every kit. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So the yeah, the food service didn't go in. I don't. I didn't change the date. It uh, it'll show up in June. So it, it shows up in that four hundred thousand figure that I, I I spoke of. So if everything goes well here. Everything that we know, and providing some, we should have about 375 left. That's usually the goal. Um, what we do at the end also is um, clean up any technology purchases that we may, may have put off during the year. So I will be checking in with Darius and Scott to see if there's any technology purchases that we've been putting off because we've uh, we've hit the budgets and and if there's any. I mean, I think there's still a couple items that are going to be. Spent out for the end of June. For example, um, if you look at like textbooks under there, I think right now that's around. It should be low teens um, in that number. I'm going to buy next year's textbooks with this year's money to save money to that account. You know what I mean? I do some. You know, you kind of buy. You know, I already know what I have to buy for. You know, so we're going to take you. So I, I buy out of this year. If I have leftover money in May. I tell the department heads to get me the request for textbooks for next year, and I try to buy some, if there's any money left over, in the textbook fund for next year. So that money will be spent, um, some portion of it will be. You've got $17,695 right. as of May. Right. Um, the other thing, I do have um, Donna Lloyd, when she gets the manual purchase orders from Roberta, she is entering them into the Envision system. So we've got more things encumbered at this point than we did last year right. at this time so that's that's an improvement as well and we should be going live with the purchase order system july 1st that is the goal i'm happy for that so unless anyone else has any other questions that is my report there was one uh the heating fuel we don't if we we buy natural gas, so we really can't prepay for that. We're, we're contract. We're under contract, yeah. Okay. And no, there's no tank I can fill up with the gas, no. Well, we used to have oil tanks, but we're not going to fill up because we're not going to use them. I think we, we – didn't we remove them here? Oh, okay. no, it still exists. We burned, oh, we just cleaned, we burned, we cleaned we it. Cleaned we burned it out. down and cleaned it out. Yeah. Um, so you probably saw a savings last year when we did that. Yeah. Um, they got to keep a certain amount, I imagine, in there to keep the tank healthy. But well, that's a let's go question. No, no we, we he passed on having me fill it this year because I had put it out to bid, and when the when it was time to commit to the bid, he said, "Don't do it." Okay, I mean, there's still some in there's still some in there because I don't mm -hmm. think they keep an empty tank, do they? Well, we found a company that we can leave them empty. They fill it with something. Okay, that's what. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, we're sitting with uh, almost forty nine thousand dollars there, which is significant. We'll try to spend it, Bob. Okay. You don't have to spend it. I just there's some things that we need to purchase, so we, we, would, we might be able to spend it. Well, we have the discretion to move it to a different account if any night we want to move it. We can do that. Yeah, what would you like to move it tonight? I mean, that becomes so. I mean, that is the end of year. I mean, the fluctuations at the end of the year, where you know, some years you have a big snow year, so you got to you know pull money from some other account to pay for some years. Some years you have a higher energy year, and so you're you're fishing those around, and. Where we've been in the last few years is we've had a lot of E&D because I haven't been doing a big purchase at the end of the year. You know what I mean? And you know we've been doing. Uh, I was thinking some of the prior. Uh, I don't say prior years prior to my being principal there. We, we would do a lot of end of year spending to you know you know let's say you're you think we were looking at three hundred thousand dollars over. It's like okay now we're going to buy some technology. We're going to buy some stuff that we put off a few maintenance items. Those kind of things. What we've done the last couple of years is we just let it go into E and D, and then we've gone to through the committee here to take things out of E and D to buy but again it's mostly maintenance. More difficult because now we have to give the Correct. towns forty five days notice that we're right. going to be doing that. Right. So um, one of the changes I did make in here was on page uh, seven. 
uh, the library roof project, we added $9,425 so that um, Bob could finish the, uh, I don't know how to say this word, clerestory windows? Clerestory. The windows. What? The windows over there? The windows over there? Yeah. <laughs> because it, when, when we bid it last year, it went over, so we had 7,700 left in the encumbrances, and we needed another 9,400, so we took it from the retirement account. Uh, which had an excess, which still has an excess. So I transferred the 9425. So that work is going to, to start happening. So that completes the phase one that you approved of the uh, Library Media Center roof project. We don't, we don't have to get anybody's permission to move it from one line to the other line. No. But if we decide to vote it out of E and D, you do. We and, have to. And that's why I moved this because you voted this last time. Um, and the other uh, thing that we should update you as far as maintenance goes, we met with the fire marshal again and he, we came up with a different plan that only cost us about $4,500. So we went ahead, did it, finished it. He's happy. He's gone. When is this scheduled to start? Uh, that I don't know, Damien. That would be a uh, Bob Lesko. It may, it'll probably be after the kids leave. Yeah, sometime in the summer. For some people that don't know what we're talking about, some new um, we had a fire in the kiln yep. so we're they made us put a hood on it but we were able to instead of ten thousand we're at forty five hundred dollars I don't think it's a hood I think it's an exhaust system isn't it hood slash exhaust okay, okay. but that's what that's where the has an exhaust fan attached okay. to a hood right? yeah it is exhaust <laughs> fan attached to a hood so. all right I didn't have too many other questions I went through and uh, read redlined a few things here but heating fuel was a big one and the concussion thing i want to know what was happening there yeah. any public comment tonight no okay student advisory doesn't Graduate. look like it <laughs> graduator <laughs> uh frontier regional building subcommittee building committee that a few of us are part of uh, We've made uh, uh, <clears throat> we had a meeting last Thursday. I thought a really productive meeting. I thought we got, we made a lot of progress. Um, we're now reaching. We have a meeting now set for July twelfth um, to discuss. That's kind of the final. I'll say the final step before we'll have some sort of something to bring forward back to the committee. Um, am I guessing that right, Bob and yes. Bill and Bob? Um, what we talked about at the last meeting, they asked the, for us to share at the school committee, is we talked about um, some definition of terms because we kind of use oh, wow. different terms interchangeably at meetings. When we talk about capital um, and maintenance and major maintenance, and so these terms were, um, were put together and um, we discussed them just so that people understand what maintenance means versus looking for capital improvement. And that a lot of the towns, um, I use the towns in general, but people, community members are concerned that, you know, maintenance things are being put on, would be put on the capital improvement budgets. For instance, you know, um, painting a wall, you know, which could, you know, not painting the whole building, but painting a certain wall is, is annual maintenance. You know, replacing certain parts of certain machines um, is annual maintenance. Where it gets kind of confusing is when you talk about major maintenance, and major maintenance is things that, Sometimes it's deferred maintenance. Instead of replacing the belt in the AC unit, you need to replace the whole AC unit. So it's a major maintenance. You're not changing the structure of the building. You're not building a wing. You're changing, you're doing a major maintenance project. And so that's kind of what the, the thing in the middle is. And that's really what a lot of what we're looking for is. Right now in that subcommittee, we talk about the track. We're not talking about building a new track. Did he get out? Is he banging over there? I don't know if that Let must be out. an exit. I'm not sure. Library. Someone's trying to get. Is he still stuck? Yeah. In there? yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. We do have a maintenance man stuck in the um, in the elevator right now, and help is on the way. So I may have to get up. What's that? I did. Did it has to do pay? I did. Um, Patty didn't, so she said. And I was in there a lot longer. <laughs> well, he is on the clock. So far. Um, yes. He's, so a, he's actually on his maintenance or the capital improvement. He's on his break. Darius told him he was on his break right now. <laughs> his lunch break. That was cute. That's cute. 
So yes, Russ is in there and he's doing just fine. I have another guy keeping an eye on him. Um, so, and then the last thing is capital improvement. If you kind of read through, um, you're talking about larger change and change of function. Um, and so basically, the committee felt it was important, especially select board members, I think even more so than school committee members, felt it was important that we had a definition of understanding the different things when we talk about purchasing things, um, especially smaller priced items that really should fall in our maintenance budget or is our maintenance budget not, not providing enough to deal with the daily maintenance and do we need to look at that over time. So that's one of the discussions. So that was one of the things they asked me to bring back here. Um, that's really all they asked us to report back. We are looking at different funding models on the 12th um, with costs to all four towns. Um, from there, in our discussion was to talk about whether or not we pull the track out as a separate bonding item. And then there was, you know, if you read through our notes there, there was the talk about there are some things on our, we call our A1 list, our, our materials that are deferred maintenance um, that really need to get done inside this building so we need to finalize that put those numbers into multiple spreadsheets for the four towns and looking at the different options at those four things and joe markarian again from FERCOG is, is is leading us down that road of helping us produce those numbers so that's kind of where we're at if anybody has any questions within i have one question yes um i, I get the definitions um but do they understand that some of our some of the things that we ask that we are asking are for our maintenance items, but because they were unmaintained for so long, that they, they now become an urgent repair? Yes. Yeah, I think people understood that. And that became, we had those, that, that kind of conversation that going back is that, you know, we put off maintenance, and not increase the maintenance budget to keep the assessments to the town low, mm -hmm. or, to, or to not cut services to students when you're putting off maintenance of things that can be put off. Right. You know, um, is it this year? Do we replace the carpet in the library? Do we can we go another year? Oh, we can go another year because it's, you know this year's budget didn't allow for us for you know those kind of I'm giving that kind of example as a, a deferred maintenance um, where a carpet should be on a cycled right. you know, so, timeline. So we talked about right. that back and forth. It's like put more money there; it's going to cost more money here. And it's, it's that back and forth game. And I think Bob Lasco has done a great job giving us a five-year capital plan. But yep. what I'd like to see next is a maintenance plan. Like what, you know, he's telling us we don't have enough money in the maintenance line. Well, exactly what you said. So in 2019, we should be doing A, B, C, D, you know, E, F, G. And in 2020, we should be doing this, you know, so that we have a, a monthly, quarter, quarterly, annual maintenance, pro, you know, plan. So we're doing part of that. Because if we do, if we spend this money and don't do that, we're going to be right back in the same situation. So we are doing that. So um, Joe is meeting with Bob, Joe Markarian is meeting with Bob Lesko, our uh, facilities um, director, and he is going to take the list that Bob had presented to us about six months, a year ago, and he is going to create a 10 year plan so that the towns and the committee can see what things are coming over the next 10 years that we're going to have to address. We know things are getting near end of life, and the big fear is that it ends life before we're ready to pay for it. And so we're going to you know, create this you know, spreadsheet that is going to be, um, you know, it's a lot of conversations, there's going to be changes in it because things will break not on a time schedule that we want them to, um, or things are going to jump things on the list, or as we've noticed this year, we were able to pay for some of the things that are on our immediate list from um, a from you know we get the tractor through the towns this year thank you towns um also we were able to pay for you know the, the second part of the the skylights there we were able to take nine thousand dollars because we saved money on the initial patching of the roof so we were able to get that done and then so you know we're going to continue to knock away at that list with what funds we have through e and d or whatever money comes our way it's not through there um, so that list will change and then also things will change priority wise if systems fail on some of the, you know, on some things that are systems like refrigerators and AC units and heating units, that kind of thing. I know Bob had a good, good thought when we were having our meeting about possibly the four towns, instead of taking a bond out, maybe CPA money for the track. It's a thought. Yeah, I mean, it's just. But they would need, but then we'd have to give public access to the track. Which, which we could do. Which I would I, like. I, yeah. 
Right? Yeah. So and we talked about that. The main reason we don't have public access to the track is the fear of um, bikes bikes on the track. You know, if you get a, no you, supervision. You get a kid out there laying skids, you can do a couple thousand dollars of damage pretty quickly. Right. So there is ways of doing it. Other schools have done it. Fence systems with S systems in it, so you can't get a bike through. And you have handicap issues. So we got to look around and see what what there is for um, what other schools are doing to to meet that need. But I think it can be it can be done. But again, it'll be a if it couple thousand dollars add to whatever the cost is. But we can yeah. make that happen too. But um, it's, it's something that we thought it was a good idea where. They'd rather have a bond and pay interest on it, or you know, like what did Bob say, two million in Deerfield's yeah. account. Deerfield's got about two million dollars in the uh, CPA CPA fund. Uh, they just tucked almost a half a million dollars away in the regular stabilization fund at town meeting. It would be wonderful if Deerfield got us that full turf surface. Yeah, I know you asked about that the other night, dear. Yeah. That's, a no, That's a no go. That's a no go. Bob, do you have a question? Uh, one of the things we're talking about is uh, some point in time, probably the first week in the first meeting in September, establishing a fixed asset slash stabilization account. And uh, and the idea would be going forward every year to put a bunch of money into that account in our budget and just as a line in it. And yeah. uh, so that we gradually build up that so we have money to do all these things that we earmarked that need to be done. I don't think we can do that without the four town approval. We, we know that. We can't make an assessment charge to them. Well, it, the well, other we're day put, we're putting we're putting in our budget as a line item. That's can't right. Do that. can't, well, can't. we were we discussed that yeah. with uh, yeah. the consultant yeah. the other yeah. night. Can, I'll have you talk with Joe when he comes in. To talk and about he it. Well, Russ says we like, can't because it's says not that? in the Russ says we can't. It's not in the original agreement. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's the case. That's a different thing. But according to Christine Lynch and uh, Dusty, that oh, can. if it's in the original agreement, you absolutely <coughs> can. Right. But it, ours is silent. Right. All right, well, we're going to have to, and that's why you're coming to the 12th. Well, it's a stabilization account. We can eliminate the word capital and we don't have the problem. Well, we already have a stabilization fund yeah, with well, nothing we wanted, in front of it. We want So now we want stabilization two with nothing in front of it? <laughs> we want it segregated zero zero, so that we zero. keep the selectmen happy that it's not a slush fund, Patty. They don't trust people that have control. I'm just saying money. we already have a stabilization fund established. If we're going to do another one. Right. In the, in, <coughs> I will bring this back after we go through it when we do our final presentation. But a capitalization stabilization fund, the difference is that you are going to go through a capital review committee, which will be a member similar to what we have now, working with the towns, because there is the fear of we give you money, you're going to spend it on different things and not on things that are important. Um, and so by creating a review committee, you can say this is what we're looking to do this year. We're going to have that 10 year plan. There should be no real surprises. It would be just what's the adjustment in that plan, and this is where we're spending the money. And the idea of putting it into the general line item and general budget, we'll have to see if we can do it. And if we have, you know, if we have amendments we have to do to our agreement, then we'll be doing amendments to our agreement next year. Um, but, you know, looking at you keep it every year, we have this much. We have $50,000 going in every year to start knocking off these different issues that are coming up. Yeah. I mean, that's the trade off. It's either that or going after a large set of money and then paying the bond all those years. And with you know we're not paying interest in the bond if we do it that way and that's a whole kind of education sales pitch that we're going to, have to put together as the next segment because remember we're talking we're building this our deadline is again the end of um, December to have this thing kind of what it looks like and we're getting ready to prepare to the towns meanwhile we're gonna be doing the back we're gonna be talking with the towns once we got this thing together going to finance committees going to select board and saying this is what we have and that's where the CPA conversation will come up if you don't want to go this way is CPA reasonable to go after in your towns. There's some towns that aren't going to want the committees who run their CPAs you know, vary from town to town and you know some aren't going to want to give it up for the high school, middle high school community. Some towns are going to feel like it's in Deerfield. We know all those issues ahead of time but it'll be this conversation instead of where we normally get them in this conversation it's the middle budget season and so now we're going to be up the fall to have those conversations and you know not be forcing them to you know, that kind of so, uh, just, just to sort of Tie it all together. Mm -hmm. Bring it on home. Um, the the uh, the the definitions that we put in front of you are sort of directly related to the creation of the capital stabilization fund and to, and everything else that the commit that committee is trying to do. And um, it, it's important so that you can stand up at town meeting and say these are the policies we're bound by them. These are the definitions that you know we can't 
just declare anything that we want to be capital and what whatnot. So um, it, that that's a that's a big deal. And the uh, the consultant, as they call it, the, the FERCOG municipal finance guy, is is really really impressive. Um, just astonishingly competent, uh, and. Um, the amount of choices that he's putting before us are really impressive as well. And so, I mean, I, I call it going to the Church of Municipal Finance and with Reverend Joe. Um, uh, but yeah. uh, it, we're, there is going to be there's going to be actually coherent products that come out of this to take to town meeting, and, uh, and we're going to be asking for a bond and a capital stabilization fund to be created at the same time in each of the town meetings. But I hope. Right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, just for an update, the bank that we used the last time when we bought out the bonds and turned them into a no Eastern Bank, they are no longer um, going to be in the business. Um, they've they've gotten rid of that department. So uh, Lori Lombard, who uh, was our account manager, has reached out to me, and she will be uh, probably working um, with Unibank uh, come come July. Anybody else have any questions for our building committee? You're awful quiet, Mr. Decker. Well, we're going to talk about some other meeting. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to talk oh. about some other things in a few minutes over uh, money coming from the E&D account. And the problem with coming from the E&D account is we have to notify the selectmen and they get to, they get to cause yep, waves. Understand. But my suggestion is we go through this financial statement and look at some of the items that s appear to be have sufficient funds in it and have the uh, direct patty to go through it and not to clean out any one of those accounts, but to find whatever funds we're going to need from those accounts and to make the necessary transfer. Okay, and I think that would be a lot cleaner than having to defend that we spent money from E and D without getting prior approval. Gotcha. So. Like the very first item on page one? You mean talking about school committee salary? Yeah, we could. We might have to give you $100 because you had to sign a couple things as secretary, right? <laughs> Pat, do you give us an update, please, on uh, the blue school? But there's a lot of them in here. I put little circles around. Um, so we have the uh, completed and signed purchase and sale agreement from Mr. Obear. Um, there's only two changes. Um, in Article 1, they, it says seller agrees to sell to buyer and buyer agrees to purchase. And they switched it to end or assigns. I don't and agree with that one. Well, Luke was fine with it. And then um, on number 18, we asked that the seller... Um, Ask the seller to store and access the res uh, be able to store and access the records presently located at the premises for 12 months after closing, and they've changed that to until June 1st, 2019, seller to hold harmless at closing. Which is almost a year. Mm -hmm. What is being drafted the hold harmless agreement? Hmm? Who's drafting the hold harmless agreement? I don't know. I'm not an attorney. It gives you something to do, Phil. You ought to be able to find one in the, on the that reference is a hold harmless agreement that's not been created yet. That's all. The other thing is the allowing the assignment of uh, that uh, contract is the contract was made with a proposal to put in elderly housing. But we don't care. We took that well, out. That's, we don't care well, what he does. Did with we it. take that out or he took it out? We took no, it. We, we voted to take it out because we did not care what he does with it. We just want Fine. to get rid of it. He did say, um, correct me if I'm wrong, there's two units instead of $1,000, they were going to be $800. Well, yeah, that's another that. thing. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like something, you know, from low income well, housing or if, something. If, we, if it says he can assign it, that means he can turn around and flip that building. As soon as we approve that language, he can flip that contract to somebody else and make substantial bucks. Good for so him. what do we care? It's America. No one else came forward. You were willing to take it for a dollar. You were willing to no, sell this building for a dollar. I was willing to give it to the town of Waitley for a dollar. You could have bought and it. And they, still, it. Can, they yeah. can still take it. After Phil signs this, now I have to send it to 
the town to their side, their right. Oh, yeah. Fusel. Fred was looking for that the other day, so. We know. I'm on, to, I'm on top of it. Yeah. And he also signed the um, actual, the um, Mass General Law Chapter 30B forms, too, that I wasn't even aware was supposed to be with it. But I went to a class and said, uh-oh. I just learned something new and sent them to Mr. Goodrich, who sent them to Mr. O'Bear, who completed them. Because we have to file it with the state that we sold property. So. Billy, can you tell me, we used to have a, there used to be a board member with that same last name from Whaley. Am I right or wrong? Same last name as O'Bear. What's that? O'Bear. I asked him already. Same last name as, what, which, what name are we talking Goodrich. about? Goodrich. Bill O'Bear. No, no, Goodrich. Oh, Goodrich. Good, Goodrich. Yeah, no, that's Luke, Mar Lou Mar Goodrich is a graduate of Frontier Regional. Marty before, was Marty? Um, I don't think Skip was on school for many. Maybe his wife, maybe Marty. Marty. Marty I think was. Marty was on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So I have a question. You guys wanted me to get a local attorney? To that's us. fine. I'm just saying. Yes, if, Cindy. If by awesome. chance that whole assignment thing happens, um, does that affect us being able to keep our stuff there until June 1st? No. Or is that transfer over with yeah, any it assignment? Runs with the property. It's, it's in this, it, it's okay. a contract that okay. runs with the property, okay. not, okay. The, not the person. Good. And for all we know, the town of Waitley may say, we are going we to want exercise our yeah. right and we're going to give you the thousand. Right. No, I was just wondering if it, go, it went with the sale. So, so it sounds like it does. There we have enough properties to worry about. So do you want to sign these tonight, Mr. King? Do you have a pen? Black. Oh. Here. Next. And we do have um, we do have a thing from Russ that says because Mr. Halla has um, a conflict that Phil can sign it, and we are without a vice chair. Sweater on. I was I was starting to sweat. You <laughs> came in with a sweater on. It's like, and then it's then Mary really comes in with a sweater. It's like, <laughs> let me tell you, it was beautiful in Conway all day where I was working. Oh my god! I hate to point it out, but it is the reason why we didn't sleep the ceiling because on a hot uh, solar day, it cooks up there, and then we got to use the energy to. We're gonna follow up with that branch, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next so cafeteria, the project can go. cafeteria team leader position and salary schedule. So that was presented to you um, at the April joint meeting and it was brought to you for uh, consideration last month and we're taking a vote this month. I need a motion for a vote. Motion. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay, and also last month the um, non-union salary recommendations um, were presented and discussed and they're on our agenda tonight to vote. And all the parties are included with the exception of the business manager because she has a separate contract. It was my renewal year. Yeah. So she's not on the list. In case you're looking for it. Do I have a motion? Motion to vote. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? So moved. Okay. Uh, Darius, she was. Take up 7 8, leave of absence, or does Pat do that? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Uh, These are just the policies. It's part of the. Uh, you, we skipped the policies. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we've got D and E to get to before I'm sorry. we get to that. All right. So, um, Lynn uh, is not here, and I cannot speak to the various policy changes in addition. So I'm hoping that Mrs. Raymond and Mr. Um, Modesto can help out in this area if anyone has any questions. Mr. Cantor would be happy to. Oh, Mr. Cantor. You, you were in the room, too. Uh, you, were I, you were the chairman. I, oh, Mr. Hall. I didn't oh, know. Okay. Right. Oh, you were the chairman oh, of the committee. Right. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> 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 
So all, so anyone can answer your questions <laughs> except me. How quick you forget? Yeah, um, the, the 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 specific ones that are in this particular package were fairly uh, minor minuscule. Change, minuscule, and these were. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of self. Does anybody, if anybody has any questions about them, we don't really need to spend a lot of time on them. I think some, were, you, some words, just a couple of words, were added. Some were taken away. Like it was all, else. like house cleaning, as Bill would say. And part of it was in. Uh, it, it was. Changes were made after an opportunity for uh, other mi mi Mr. Modesto to make some changes as to what specific, uh, how to better describe exactly what, what the current practice is and whatnot. So. These were all checked out by your council. As if that would give you a lot of confidence. You don't have much faith in our council. No. Is there a reason for that? Uh, Let's stick to our time. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's That's go. Appropriate. Um, Do I have a motion on the uh, on the policy changes? So moved. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? Thank you. I guess you're well, you're full you're full of everything tonight. Mm -hmm. you're full. So um, when we had our audit done, um, we had uh, discussed, uh, we had, I had brought up an issue that I was concerned about um, regarding um, the, the status of some of our liability accounts. So I gave you all a spreadsheet that looks like this. And this is what's happening. So when we have um, all the employees at Frontier who take life dental and health have deductions taken from September to June but it's paying for the health insurance from September to August mm -hmm. so in June there should be two months worth of monies that we've paid in sitting in these accounts and they're not they're not there now, how did this happen? I cannot tell you because this existed when I got here. So this is the recommended entry to correct those accounts. Um, the first column, that's H, that means health. The second column is L, that's life. And the third column, D, is dental. And T is total. So we originally thought it was going to be around 60000 um, the health and the total to fix all three accounts is eighty one thousand six fifty three forty eight. Uh, the the recommendation is to take sixty eight thousand three twenty eight sixty two from the E and D or um, and then maybe try to find thirteen thousand three twenty four eighty six in this year's expenditures as Mr. Decker was saying to make the the full correction of the eighty one thousand six fifty three forty eight. This includes not only actives, but also retirees. We take that money out of people's paychecks. Yep. Where'd it go? I, I think the error happened. Um, this is my conjecture. When we switched from Franklin County to Hampshire County Trust, I think the accounting got screwed up. And no one ever fixed it. And I raised this issue with Stanley Kulik several times and he'd say no you're wrong that's not what you're paying for but when i would talk to paula who does it paula is saying well this is how i was taught to do it and i said okay well if we're doing it the way you were taught to do it then our books are wrong because there should be two months worth of deductions held from everybody's pay sitting in these accounts in june and it's not there and the, and part of this could be that um when we joined hampshire trust I think they took the money out of the withholdings to make the deposit with Hampshire Group Insurance Trust. And I, that, I, and I have, I'm just totally guessing how this happened. See, and I, um, I don't know, conjecture just doesn't sit well. The, well, there's no, there's no history here. There's nobody here, there's nobody They had the money works. deducted. There's, had, no, there's they, nobody here now that knows how it got screwed up, Phil. They did have the money deducted from their paychecks. Absolutely. And, and the premiums were paid. And the premiums were paid. So the money is somewhere. No. It, it was, was whenever, this, whenever the, the original error occurred. But 
there's no money to pay the July and August premiums be, that's going to be accrued on June 30th to pay them. We've taken their money, we've spent their money, but we haven't accrued the liability that should be on the books on the 1st of July. But the amounts deducted from their paychecks were correct amounts. Correct. Yes. yes, that was all checked out. And we, we didn't pay too much out. during the intervening 10 months that we're missing two months. We, we didn't overpay during those 10 a, months. It's a perpetual So the money problem. is somewhere. Right. It's a perpetual problem. One year, on? one year we probably overstated probably our expenditures yes. and understated our liability. And we've never made the correct. We'd have to probably go back to when you, the they went to the Hampshire Trust and, and go back and see on that switch over how much we had to upfront them when we first joined them we have like a two hundred thousand dollar deposit with them so that so and that deposit and i asked if that with that deposit should i didn't know that that we had money there um and i asked if that money should be shown as an asset on our books and they said no but we have two hundred thousand dollars on deposit with hampshire group insurance trust and what that money is for is if we decide to leave that's the trailings money. So once we leave, anything that the bills, if the bills come in late, they're going to use that to pay it. But it should be listed on our balance sheet because it is an asset. He said, uh, he, but they're I not going to ever give it to us. To. Right? He said no. But anyway, you want to take the money from E and D. Well, um, and I think if we take it from E and D, uh, we're going to have to explain a lot to the board of selectmen in the four towns because you're going to have to send them a notice. Well, um, or whatever is statutorily required. So I was asked to amend the vote to say uh, to approve the use of last year's ending balance to correct the insurance premiums accounting in the approximate amount of sixty thousand. But we can now change it to the sixty-eight three twenty-eight sixty-two because we really should have made the we should have made the entry. So the financial statements will have to be amended then. Well, yes. He didn't and, and the annual reports will have to be amended. Yeah, well, then we can take it out of E and D, and we when we send the forty-five but if, but day we, notice. I don't if we, do it either way. But if we can find it in this current year's budget, by isolating some of those accounts, we can transfer the money in to make that balance, and the, and I think it's a lot cleaner. I would I would prefer that because then we don't have to give the 45 day notice but if we are taking if I got a, an 81 that might take up that might eat up the whole chunk of money that could be available for all we know well I don't know uh, you know I went through and I got a whole bunch of items circled uh, that if you took half of it so they add each up to one of them, thousand? Oh yeah I mean you got but did you also circle the big negatives <laughs> well I took that's why I said you take half of them well, I mean you what are you what are you projecting at the end of June, what are you projecting that approximately we're going to have? Are we going to have? We're going to have nothing in there, and they're telling us we should have eighty-one thousand six fifty-three forty-eight. No, I'm talking about no in our budget. In our in our budget, at about three hundred thousand to three fifty. Well, right now we have three hundred and forty-five thousand, and it's June twelfth. So if we have two hundred thousand left over, we can still take the eighty-one. So we can take the eighty-one out of the two hundred. I'm just I'm right. You know, we have That's all I'm saying is that we have been having our free cash certified at about three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars a year. If we do this out of this year's, just know that our free cash, our excess and deficiency number is going to be very low, certified very low. Except what we're already carrying in that account that we haven't taken out. What have we done? Well, this only been going on for so many years. What have we been doing for the last ten years to cover this? Right. They just keep making the same entries every year, Damien, and that's and that and that's part two because I've asked the auditors. I said, "Well, which if we if I make this entry, then I need you to help me draw draft up a procedure of how this is supposed to get booked correctly every month, so that it doesn't happen again." So now, so right now, she's banging the expense account in July and August. She should be banging the withholding account. All right. But it's been going on. So it's been Pat, going on for so long. But it started before Patty. So and that's, before Paula. But, but this is conjecture. That. But this is conjecture. It started right. before Paula. I understand Paula? that. But if the, if the money is always short, it's short it's here. go all the way back to Doctor Spreadsheet. But nobody's ever noticed. If, if the money is always no, short, in June, how have we have. always covered it? Hasn't this been an issue every single June? It doesn't get caught, Damien. I've been 
when I came here, uh, and I tried to get my head around this, okay, I would go to our auditor and ask him, you know, Paul is telling me this, it works this way, and he would say, no, it works this way, so there should be no money. So he was saying it was actually working in reverse, so he wouldn't fix it. So then we decided to go out for a new audit uh, firm, and we got Scanlon in. So the first year Tom was here, I said, Tom, here's this issue I have. And he said, well, we'll do some testing. He goes, but this is our first year, so let us get our feet wet. So then he tested it. So he did a, a little testing first year, little testing second year, and then th this is his third year. And he said, you're right, this is wrong. So and, uh, and he's yeah. making the recommendation to, well, to fix it. Well, he told us about it when he came in. Right. right. So it's just been a paper error for 10 years, mm -hmm. and we haven't had to cover the money. And now we have to cover the money. The money's always been taken from people's paychecks. We just don't know where the hell it went. Right. But this is putting this is putting on the books that we've taken this amount of money out of people's paychecks. So if I, if anyone were to leave, we'd owe them money. Because if it's any teacher that left in June, well, they, no, I shouldn't say teacher because teachers by law are covered through July and August. So if we had a, an uh, instructional assistant leave us in June and they said they didn't want their insurance anymore, we'd owe them July and August premiums and, we and they're not here to pay okay. them back. Okay. But see what's happened is they've never actually listed all that money that they withheld, right? Because they withheld uh, $4,000 and they only paid out 3600 on an employee during the year. So that other $400 was never booked as a liability to the district on July 1. So what's happening is our financial statements have been off because we didn't properly disclose our liabilities. So if we take this from free cash, then further down the road, if we if something happens, can we then do the E&D for something else? Well, you don't want to take it from E&D e &D because... Free cash and E&D are the same thing. Okay, so then we need 45 days for both. What's What were you and Bob so... Well, what what, what, what are... Uh, we, right, we should have the made the adjustments before we closed the books and threw the money into the E&D. Yes. Okay. We should have done that last year, only we didn't have the figures. Okay. So now they've spent the time and came up with the actual, what they're estimating as figures, and I helped them do this. Okay. So these are the figures right. that we feel should be on the books this June 30th. So where 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 are you two in agreement, strangely that enough, instead, that we should uh, take? That instead of voting it right out now. of E&D, that I find it in this year's budget and make the correction. Go through the individual line items in the budget and take some. Right. We make the appropriate transfers to take the extra money from 17 different places, put it in, put it in the account that will properly cover this so that it doesn't involve E&D free cash, whatever you want to call it, and it doesn't involve 45 days notification or anything else, because we are free as a group to make the transfers within the line items in this budget. We just got to pick through the thing and find So if that's money. a motion, I'll second it. Hold on for a second. We can still have discussion. Okay. Sure. Why not? Okay. I'll second it. Okay. So my, my thought is back when Mr. Scanlon brought this to our attention with Patty's attention, it was $60,000. I just want to know why it's up to eighty-one thousand dollars from sixty thousand a year ago. The life of the dental, I don't think. Right. We but we had originally only been ta right. talking about That's the health, and then when Thanks. we were going through the accounts, it, the light dawned. Wait a minute! If the health's wrong, the life of the, the dental's wrong, wrong yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, so, so uh, we've never actually done the notification to the select boards. With we've never done that process. We've always. No, so, but this, we've been so, so this is every bit the same spent. as putting in a request to get something in the warrant for town meeting in terms of the, the, the way you'll be evaluated on your request. And if we if we did it this way. Right. So so when you so they're gonna say eighty thousand dollars, that's real money. Come in, tell us why you need it. And if if we sit there and say, We're guessing this is why. You're gonna, we're no, gonna, we're not get. We're, we're not guessing why. We know what we have to do. We don't know how it okay, happened. We'll All right, we're guessing how. If we're, we're guessing how is the same, just as bad as we're guessing why. And and um, that's if anybody's I'm, watching us. I'm, I'm going sure to I'm, I'm gonna somebody, suggest that, 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 that um, in order to avoid having your head handed to you at a select board meeting, that you. That not my head. This happened before me. Yeah. Well, you, I brought uh, it. To, uh, 
who's going to Hello, gonna, who's I'm the one that brought it to the attention that it was wrong. Boards in the summer and I think they've already heard about it. We talked about yes. it when they were here at the budget because meeting. He, but still, I think I should be getting credit. Not, so this is right. being blamed. This motion is good fix. So we have a motion and a second to take the 81000 out of multiple line items instead of going through. To identify and make the proper transfer yeah. for sure. sufficient to cover. Okay. What do you say? All right. Okay. So um, we're going to take the entire 81000 Round six, it up a little bit. Six, I'll five, say 82000 82, Approximately 82000 From line items two, within the budget. From this year's expense budget. In order to correct the accounting for insurance. On a motion from? Me. Bill, Bill Smith. And a second from um, the committee agrees uh, to to use current year funds. Okay, we're, we're going to reallocate existing line items to cover the sufficient ones. Do you want us to try to tell you which accounts? Or no, Bob, I'm I'm, I'm good. Okay. She's a big girl. What's that got to do with it? It's her job. <laughs> it's sexist, you know, Rob. <laughs> you get in trouble for that. <laughs> Moving it's, on. It's sizest. <laughs> it's sizest. That's cute. Yeah. Sizism. Oh, you should your vote on it. I am. I'm waiting for. She's just got to finish. Before we vote on that, though, it, I mean, is that feasible to come up with eighty-two thousand dollars per line item? I would. I, I can tell you right now that if I told, if I went to Mr. De, uh, Ms. Desto and Mr. Uh, Scott and said, "What do you need in technology?" They'd tell me, "Can you get find me eighty-five okay. grand?" And All I'd right. say, "Yes, I'll find you eighty-five grand." Right. Now you got to tell them. 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 Eighty-five grand. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, new tires in the car. You don't really know what you got. Just this purchase. <laughs> Pierce, we'll take care of you. Okay, Thank so you. Um, the committee agreed to reallocate this year's expenses for, in, for insurance premiums in order to correct the accounting in the approximate amount of 82000 So we yep. need a vote. All in favor? Thank you. So yeah. this is now corrected? It will be. I'll make okay. the entry. And it will never happen again. Never ever. Well, actually, the first of July, the next there time. should be an, a uh, oh, okay. so worksheet we done by the accountant to, to, to actually pinpoint the liability, make sure we have the proper liability for going forward. Here's line items. Darius, okay. you want to take take on the leave of absence this time, please? Sure. Um, you have a request for leave of absence from faculty member according to the collective bargain being agreement. It has to come to you. Um, and basically we have a, a faculty member who is taking an administrative position within the greater five town district i mean four town district rather um and is looking for a year take a year leave of absence a year leave of absence basically means that we're holding a position for this person they don't accrue step they don't get any wages they get nothing we're just holding that position for a year when a teacher moves to just for those who don't know this, if for teachers who move to the administrative contract, or administrative contract, lose all the protections of their union, lose all of their um, uh, protections of having a job and within a system. And so it's a big risk to go from that first year into administration. And so we've done this before. Um, you haven't done it, but the district, the, the five, the four towns and five schools have done it before with other first year administrators to give that protection. If 90 days goes by and this person can't administrate, they're, they're taking a big risk and therefore we're trying to support um, people from within to take the risk and that kind of thing. And I have no, um, I have no hesitation on this individual coming back to Frontier. I'd hire this person in a second. Um, I'm happy to, I'm not happy to see her leave Frontier. If, Robert, if she decides to come back, uh, at the 90-day time, are you going to have a slot for her because you're giving her a year's No, leave? technically it would be a one-year leave of absence. I, I could tell her to wait the one year or if I had an opening. Um, but we're under you know, no but, obligation but we're to no take obligation. her back It's a one-year leave. She's not, September. Her budget, her position is going to be, the money in the budget for her position is going to be spent on someone else. All right. I just want to make sure it's clear. And I did yep. discuss this with you before. Yep. So I, yep. I'll have, Mr. Chair, I'm going to 
Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve a one-year leave of absence for a faculty Second. member for the purpose of transferring into another district school position. It's a, it's a superintendent's okay, wait a minute. I'm Deerfield just reading. position. I'm just but reading. that's not correct. It's not another district. It's the Deerfield School Committee. Into another in-district school position. It's not in the district. I have under new business. The committee discussed the requested a leave of a frontier regional faculty member in order that she may be allowed to transfer to the Deerfield Elementary School for a period of one year on a motion from Cindy Wimett, seconded by Damian Fosno. Sounds good to me. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Patty, you're up again. <laughs> okay, so... Um, we uh, three years ago, um, the committee uh, wanted to go out and search for a new audit firm, and we did. We had a group that uh, members of this committee served on, and we chose Scanlon and Associates, and we did a three-year contract with them. This is the third year. So, Mr. Scanlon has proposed um, another three-year contract. He has not increased his prices. He's going to hold the price the same. So, it'll be seventeen thousand dollars a year for the audit. $3,000 for the end of the year report, and I believe it was $3,000 for the um, uh, student activity fund, which also now is required by DESE to be signed, um, to be done, yes. Um, so altogether, uh, uh, so $23,000 a year, and he would hold that price for fiscal year 18, 19, and 20. Um, and I'm just looking for, for permission to have the superintendent or myself sign this contract for three year engagement letter. So moved. Question. Second. Second first. Second. Judy. Questions, Mr. Decker? Is um, in the past he's given us statements that are sufficient to keep the bonding companies happy? Are those included? We haven't had a need for them. No, but he's given us the inf he's audited with, yeah. the, with that in mind. Yes. And he also audits our, our excess and deficiency, which includes a balance sheet. But what I'm just trying to say is we're, he will cover if we have to come up with something to get the bonding uh, finance. But there may be a cost to that if it's outside the scope of the audit uh, of the engagement. I thought letter. he had it included the last time. So that's what, um, that was I, my I, only I, question. I don't know. If he had to do work, if we had to go to, go to a bond for the building project? Yeah, there's some different requirements, I think. <laughs> yeah, but what's that got to do with the audit? I wouldn't expect right. this to is, that would be a separate issue. We may have to go outside. The, just like some things are covered by our retainer with our attorney and some things aren't covered by our retainer with our, with our attorney. All right. I just... So this is just a basic auditing of the financial statements for, th for the next three years. 18, 19, 20. Are we in 18? We're in 18. We're in 18. So it would be, he'd do this year, next year, and the following. The audits for Oh, the 18, audit of 19. the fiscal year, got it. And I did, I, 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 and I had sent you, I had sent you this information earlier, and I, I have to tell you, there's such a world of difference with having him here um, with his staff. Um, and they're local, and I like that they're a local company. Um, Tom takes my calls. I call him all year long whenever something pops up to get his advice. Uh, he helped us when we were, uh, we reviewed with him our choice of where to put our OPEB money. He came over and we reviewed with him and got his opinion on that. He's always very helpful whenever we call him, and it, it's, uh, it, it's a good working relationship and, and, and with our staff <coughs> and his staff. So we'd just like to echo that he's also the auditor for a number of our towns. And, yes, he uh, is. He's very well thought of, and I know the Conway Town Hall. Is... I don't think he does Conway. He does Sunderland. He, he does Wayne. He might have in the past. Yeah, but we think well of him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys went to some other firm because I had the end of the year report. That's the only reason I know. Okay. Um, we're going to be going in an executive session. Well, I need a vote. Oh, I thought we voted. We got a motion. Got a motion. No. We got a motion. Oh, we need a vote. I ask questions. <clears throat> All in favor? Thank you. Sorry. It's hot. It is, right? Yeah. So, um, so you, are you giving permission? Uh, does that include give permission for me to sign the engagement letter? You or Lynn? I think that was written in there, actually. Yeah. 
that's See, place. right there between three okay. year and audit. So we're going to go into executive session. You got the C to do yet? Excuse me? You got C? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to go into executive session for that. For C? For C, yes. You for C in executive session? For B, if you read B underneath. Number nine, yeah. So um, let me just find okay. the. Okay. Right. So what what time is it? Um, uh, seven o five. Seven o five. Okay. So it's going to um, be. It, I'm going to need I, a roll if I can call. I promise you, it's going to be should be fairly quick. Yeah, we've said that before. Said that it should, should, should we just move to adjourn? Get out of that big boat. There's no way it can sink. Bobby, we're not going to wait for them. To Bobby, down. we're coming back because we have to do the reports. Yep. We yep. have to adjourn yep. out of. Okay, now I need a motion. Mr. Chairman, hold on. Are we going to do the motion? <coughs> do you not want us to do the motion in the second about what we just talked about next uh, in, in the executive session? I want to make the motion relative to Okay, that. go ahead, Mr. Decker. I move that under the direction of the principal, authorization to use up to $30,000 from the rental account. No, 20, no 20. it's 2020. 2020. He can make any kind of motion he wants. Okay. Yes, he can. We can amend Sorry. it. Simply because the 30000 and take the... Uh, notify the towns for the other 10,000 out of E&D. Uh, but if you want to change it to something else, that's fine. I don't think you I can just want to give him. We're out. <laughs> I just we want to. Make, I want to make sure he has enough money to, out of the rental account to do the doors and and whatever else, well, and not be over, short. That's where we're going. But I don't think we can change the motion now that we're out of We've executive already made session. The motion. We already made the motion. In, in you talked about making a motion. You we didn't did vote a motion. Nobody made it. We did not vote the motion. We didn't but we vote made any the motion. motion. Well, then do we have to go back in? No, we don't. No. So are you I'm making an amendment or is it a motion? <laughs> we made a motion. There was no second. His motion's dead. Okay. Fine. All right. So can I read the one that, that Donna wrote to make my life simple? Go for it. Okay. No, the committee agreed to use approximately 40 thousand dollars from uh, ten, tw 20 from E and D 20 from building rental for the purpose of building security improvements to be done under the direction of the principal and also to approve executive session minutes can I get a motion so moved. I'm sorry who said that Bill Bill and Keith okay do a minute Okay. How did that get tied into How do you get in the executive session? Because Bill approval. Smith told me to do it before we win it. We have to approve both of them. We have to approve both of them in open session. Yeah. Well, we don't do it tonight. Really is. Is We're not doing it tonight. Does anybody else have any other discussion about either of them? I don't think they'd be separate. Anybody have any other discussion about the security? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I go home now? Nope. <laughs> oh, we got more stuff. Um, I don't have anything. Collaborative? Yes. We have a meeting coming up, I think, on the 27th. Uh, it was a meeting uh, late last month. Uh, we were informed that there's a projected deficit of at least $250,000. There's a lot of that going around. Not here. I know. Okay. And uh, just want you to know. Uh, you know, people aren't happy about it, and uh, but that's it. That's the, the best case scenario. Right now, it's higher than that, but they think it's going to close to about a two hundred fifty thousand shortfall. Wow. Uh, so th the other thing is, I did have uh, Don Hathaway send you a bunch of stuff, uh, and there's another email I got after that that uh, I can forward to you on the new programs and what have you. If anybody's interested, anybody interested in the programs going forward I'll have it all emailed to you all right thanks but I don't like 250 short because they get no surplus to really to fall back on what is that happening? I can tell you a couple things but they would be scolded for it okay don't okay so Darius you have a principal's report in front of us yep I mean most of the stuff is that you can read through um, graduated class thank you everybody who could attend skip the rain which was wonderful I did some AP test statistics just so that looking at the number of students who are participating in AP exams in AP classes is pretty impressive when you look at you know our graduating class is 83 and 
Um, so you're talking about 50 to 60 percent of our kids attempting an AP class, which is wonderful. Um, we had our annual art show that we do each year that the students put on performances and show their visual um, displays um, for the whole um, student body and staff. I want to thank those who participate in the Memorial Day parades, the uh, bands and such. They are, I know they are a highlight, and I got many compliments from the community, um, unsolicited, obviously. Um, people calling me the next day just very happy about um, the Memorial Day parades. We did our step-up days two days after graduation. Once we get one group out, we got the next group in. And just as you kind of as a refresher, as we do it, we do a step-up also to high school. So we have six to seven, seven to eight, and eight to nine. So it's a big three-ring circus. And then we do a big fair in the gym, uh, presenting all the different clubs and activities, and um, kind of the whole school gets into it. And then last, I was just notified yesterday that um, our varsity baseball program uh, won the uh, Hampshire County, Hampshire and Franklin County Baseball Empire Association Sportsmanship Award, um, which is very impressive. I mean, usually that award, considering that we have a very successful season going on right now for baseball, to also win the Sportsmanship Award. Um, is a nice one-two combination for them. So I just want to say that publicly. Final exams, Thursday and Friday next week, and then we're off to summer. Woohoo! Anybody have any questions for Darius? No superintendent report tonight? No, she did not send one. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you.